Our guest on This is America and the World is Ambassador Paul Altidore. Ambassador Altidore represents the Republic of Haiti to the United States. Born in Haiti, the ambassador has earned degrees from Boston College and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, both, of course, in the United States. Prior to being posted to the United States, Ambassador Altidore served as vice president for the Clinton-Bush Haiti Fund in Washington. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here today with you. We've got plenty of time to talk. Sure. Is there a narrative about Haiti that we should take a look at right from the beginning? Well, there's been a very negative narrative about Haiti that, uh, unfortunately, that has been part of the American consciousness. Uh, for too long, our country of Haiti has been known as a country of just disasters, natural disasters, political instability. But the fact is, Haiti is actually much more than our problems. Uh, there's a vibrant culture. There's a vibrant uh, uh, scenery happening in Haiti that the rest of the world has yet to rediscover. I say rediscover because at some point in our distant past, Haiti was a destination of choice uh, for a lot of people here in the United States, celebrities and uh, regular Americans. And now we're working toward re-educating the American public, more importantly, finding ways for people to actually come back to us as a leisure destination rather than just a, a charity destination. About 10 million people, is that about That's right? That's about that. So talk a little bit about the, uh, the character of the people, the values of the people, the the characteristics of the people. We should get to know them through you. Let's keep in mind that uh, Haiti is the second oldest republic in the hemisphere mm. after the United States. Okay. We became an independent country in 1804 and the first black free republic in the world. And that speaks volume to who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. The whole idea that uh, uh, former slaves were able to defeat one of the biggest and strongest armies in the history of the world, the Napoleon army. Mm -hmm. And we, we pushed them away. And uh, so that led to a series of things happening for us as a country. So in that sense, uh, the, the history of Haiti itself tells you a lot about who we are as a people, our character, how strong we are, how mm -hmm. determined we are to actually lead the way. And Haiti became the symbol of freedom uh, for a lot of countries, not just in the hemisphere, but throughout the world. And today, you have a country, just like in our past, a country that is welcoming to people. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Haiti, you know, folks are willing to give up their bed so you can actually feel, you know, sleep comfortably in their home. So that's how welcoming we are as a, as, as a people, as a country. And now we, in this crusade, we, we in starting this movement to ensure that people get to know that side of the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we speak today, there's a jazz festival happening in Haiti. Uh -huh. And again, things that the rest of the world would not necessarily equate with the country of Haiti. Mm -hmm. Too often, when Haiti is being talked, it's when there's a disaster happening. Mm -hmm. Too often, when Haiti is being talked about in the US media, there's something not good happening in Haiti. And now, that's how the, the, the conversation has been going for way too long. Mm -hmm. And now, we, we on this journey to ensure that people get to see the package called Haiti. Mm -hmm. We have our issues, and we are addressing some of these issues, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of great things happening in the country of Haiti, and we're now making certain that we control the narrative of, that, uh, uh, of this conversation and let the world know who we are as a people. Turning the clock back, uh, I know that uh, just within the last uh, couple of weeks, there was the Day of Remembrance of, That's the, of the horrific uh, uh, earthquake uh, uh, of, of eight years ago. A uh, huge loss of life, uh, homelessness to so many people, impacting the, uh, the infrastructure, the That's economy. Right. Where are we now? Hmm? Well, the, the, obviously, we move away from the recovery process. Now we know we're building phase. Uh, nation building, nation rebuilding is a very heavy, uh, long-term undertaking. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Haiti, things have been going OK, not as efficiently, not as well as I would have liked to see it as a Haitian, most and foremost. Mm -hmm. That being said, there have been significant progress happening on the ground. 
Now, you know, uh, uh, we, that's why we're trying to bring the American public, we're trying to bring the international community into, into Haiti, but again, with a different set of lenses, not a set of lenses where people are simply looking ways to do charitable work with us, but more importantly, how to partner with us, uh -huh. how to create a business environment where investment can actually flow into the country, where local entrepreneurs can actually grow their business and eventually thrive. That's mm -hmm. where we are right now, where we're inviting American universities not to send the students to spend a week to do charitable activities, but to actually spend the students in a Haitian classroom and spend a semester with us. Ah. So we're defining a new narrative, a, d a new ways for the rest of the world to look at us as a country, as a people. So from a, from a rebuilding point of view, there's been some significant progress made, but there's been some obstacles, there's been some challenges along the way. You know, since the earthquake, Haiti has been with, hit with at least three other mm -hmm. major hurricanes. Mm -hmm. We had a cholera outbreak that kind of brought us back a little bit in terms of uh, difficulties and challenges that we face. That being said, we still are positive people. We're looking forward, and there's been significant progress being made to ensure that the country is actually back on track to become a, a true emerging economy in the near future. Let us uh, take a little break, uh, tell the folks at home, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to learn uh, about Haiti, a country that has been in the news on a variety of fronts uh, over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, so we want to take a very positive attitude with the ambassador uh, to uh, learn about the people. Uh, as I recall, uh, the earthquake uh, eight years ago. That's right. 250,000. Well, actually, well over 300,000 people Th lost their lives. 300,000 people lost their lives. And more than almost 2 million people internally displaced, who became instantly homeless. Uh, and just devastated the economy, the infrastructure, exactly. everything. Uh, but hopefully, uh, on the road to recovery, good things are happening. We'll take a little break. Back on the other side with the ambassador from the Republic of Haiti. Sit tight. This is America and the world. This is America and the World is brought to you by the Libra Group, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President, the League of Arab States, the Rotondaro Family Trust, Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned uh, the, uh, the uh, history of the country a little bit. Uh, and I just find the history of the country absolutely fascinating. Uh, first of all, from a geographic point of view, it shares an island, right? With the Dominican Republic, With that's the right. Re but it's also, what, the third largest uh, country in the Caribbean uh, uh, exactly. area? Exactly. Keep in mind, again, from a geographical point of view, from a population point of view, from an historic point of view, Haiti has been a symbol, at least a leader for uh, other countries to follow in some ways. And despite our setback, and those are the things we're addressing right now to ensure that we take the place that historically has been Haiti's position in the region, given our size, given our history. Cuba, Dominican Republic, and then Haiti, as far That's as right. size of the country. 1492, how does Columbus stumble upon <laughs> Haiti, number one, and thinking it's either Asia or, or, or India? Yes. How did that happen? And you got his anchor, right, for one of the ships? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Columbus came. Uh, again, there's a sad chapter in that history as well. So obviously, Columbus brought Haiti when the Indians were there initially, mm -hmm. uh, brought it kind of to the limelight of the Western world. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, uh, the goal of Haiti, the, 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 the beauty of Haiti, there was some destruction to that as well uh, by the Spanish. This mm -hmm. is just facts. And uh, obviously with uh, the, the slave trade, uh, with the Indian population literally decimated uh, uh, by slavery, so the, the, the Africans were brought in. And uh, at some point throughout this history between the French, the, the British, and, and the Spanish, a lot has happened uh, along the way. But ultimately, like I said, 
the slaves of, uh, uh, of Haiti at the time, Saint-Domingue, we managed to actually unshackle ourselves mm -hmm. from, from, from slavery, more importantly, leading the way for other people to become free as well. And one of the key things that happened in Haiti's independence, after our independence, Haiti, as a newly independent country, it was enshrined in our constitution. Any slave person out there, once they make it to Haiti's shores, by law, they became a free person. And wow. Haiti was willing to pay for their freedom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in fact, uh, Haiti almost got into a major war with the British because there were actually a few slaves from Jamaica, what is now Jamaica, uh -huh. who actually made it to Haiti's shores. And the Haitians would not allow those uh, 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 enslaved folks to be returned to Jamaica wow. as, uh, as slaves. So again, that's a rich history here. You uh, mentioned uh, 1804 as a, as a crucial time, but I want to back it up to the late 1700s. Sure. Late 1700s, and correct me if I'm wrong here, 25,000 Europeans, 22,000 uh, what they call free colored, 700,000 African slaves. Am I correct? Well, let's, let, let, again, that's why the controversy of last week, I felt in, in, in some ways uh, the president of the United States was not just misinformed, but misunderstood the history of Haiti when, it's, when it comes to the immigrant population here, and more importantly, those of Haitian descent. Correct us. Even before 1804, the indigenous army of Haiti sent troops here to ensure that they fought for the American independence. Yes. So in other words, yes. Haitian blood was actually uh, given uh, a sacrifice to ensure that this country where we're sitting here is actually be, is a free country from the British in some ways. Georgia is in there. Savannah, someplace. Georgia, actually, yeah. there's a statute of uh, Haitian soldiers there as uh, to recognize our contribution to Americans' freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and again, this is a way of saying this is how far back Haiti and the United States have been working together. This mm -hmm. is how far back the Haitians have been contributing to the social and economic fabric of American life. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, most of that history is lost somewhere along the way. Mm. And we are on this journey to ensure that, regardless what people may think of us as a country, as a people, the facts speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. We've been a great contributor. We haven't been passing through this country. In fact, we've been part of the fabric of this country from its inception. So, so key dates, late uh, 1700s, 1804. Haiti became independent. In the 1900s, the first half of the 1900s, the United States was in and out, in and out, in and well, out. Well, there's a long <coughs> history of US intervention in Haiti. So in this long- But both good news and bad both, news. In good and bad ways. Uh, again, uh, Haiti was occupied by the United States mm -hmm. from 1915 to 1934, mm -hmm. uh, a U.S. military occupation 20, of the island. 20,000 troops. Exactly. And uh, so in that sense, the long intertwined history between the people, the country of Haiti, and the people of the United States, again, as in a relationship, there's been it's up and down. And so, then they grabbed some, uh, some money, and they were going to, the United States under President Wilson is going to kind of run your country. Among other things. Like I said, <laughs> you know, there's, there's been some disservice to a certain degree, some injustice done to the country of Haiti. Keep in mind, even in the aftermath of our independence, many countries of the world where there were enslaved people still, they would not recognize Haiti's independence. Mm. So there was an economic embargo on Haiti from all over, including the wow. United States, wow. Wow. because they didn't want that to become, uh, there, there wouldn't be a domino effect of other enslaved people around the world. Uh, revolting. Uh, revolting. Ah, got so you covered. Haiti was more or less <clears throat> put in a hole to ensure that what happened wow. there on the island was not replicated elsewhere. Ah. So the country of Haiti has been suffering from a series of issues within, within the international uh, uh, domain that has prevented its normal development trajectory. So despite those challenges, and those are the things we want people to ensure they, they know about, they understand kind of the challenges we face, the, 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 the long history we've had in good and bad ways with our neighbors. In, uh, in more in modern times, struggle between 
democracy dictatorship. About 34 years of the Duvalier dictatorship yeah. between yeah. fathers and sons. Uh, and then uh, the priest comes along, the former priest. Well, in 1986, there was a strong movement to undo the dictatorship of, uh, of uh, Mr. Duvalier and his uh, regime. So since 1986, there's been a succession of, of governments. But again, uh, Haiti was putting itself on a path to uh, 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 st political stability. So the, the democratic process in Haiti has been ongoing. And the good news, as mm -hmm. we we're talking about post-earthquake here, mm -hmm. Haiti now, in the last three series of elections, there's been a, a, a peaceful process of power going from one government to the next. So again, this is our way of saying this level of stability that Haiti has been looking toward to gradually we moving into that direction. Let us talk uh, and, <clears throat> and take advantage uh, and put a couple of tough things sure. on the table, okay? Because I want you to talk about the economy. Sure. Uh, evidently, uh, the world's leader of exporting some kind of a plant or root or something. Well, that's there are a few things that Haiti is known for. Vetiver, tell, tell. For instance, vetiver, uh, vetiver is what you use to make fragrances. So yeah. most of the best perfumes, fragrances you're using Chances are it's originated from Haiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mangoes these days is a big uh, 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 expert uh, that Haiti uh, sent to the world. Uh, right now, again, uh, part of many of the stories that are not making the news round, mm -hmm. you know, now you have young Haitian entrepreneurs. You have entrepreneurs even from the Haitian American community, young folks with uh, graduate degrees now working with. Uh, co-ops in Haiti, where we're exporting uh, cacao, where we're exporting a series of things. So some of the most exquisite chocolates you may be consuming on your uh, shelf, some of it actually originate uh, from Haiti. And a huge uh, tourism, over a million uh, Well, more? we're hoping to, again, Haiti was the number one, tourist, number one tourism destination not too long ago. Right. So back in the 50s and the 60s, you know, Hollywood actually, when it's cold, when it's, uh, uh -huh. that's where Haiti would be the destination of choice. Do people come choice. now? People are coming again. So we're hoping to get to a point where the, the scale of folks coming would be much higher than what it is now. So we're building the infrastructure to address some of the issues on the ground in terms of making certain that the people of Haiti are living more comfortably. But at the same time, building an infrastructure where the leisure travelers would feel more welcome to come to Haiti. Good, good, good. So there have been two, now there are two major airports operating in the country to ensure that whether from Florida, from Atlanta, Georgia, from, from, uh, from Boston and from other parts of the U.S., people can easily go down there. So there are a number of cruise ships going to Haiti. Mm -hmm. But ultimately what we're trying to do here is to actually multiply even by 10 the amount of tourists that Haiti can attract. Something I read, sure. and help me if I understand correctly, two-thirds of the workforce have no formal jobs. Seven out of ten people are living for less, on less than $2 a day. And 80% of, of college graduates leave and go abroad. Are those numbers accurate or fairly accurate? And how does poverty uh, affect the country? Well, let me say one thing. As an ambassador, mm -hmm. as a Haitian, mm -hmm. those facts, whether or not they, they, they completely accurate, it says something, that there's something we're not doing right okay. as a country. And those are the issues we're trying to address right now. Right. So whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, ten dollars a day in 2018, it's unacceptable that such a large number of anybody's population should be living in those conditions. Yeah. So those are the challenges we are facing. More importantly, these are the challenges we are addressing and tackling heads on. Mm -hmm. So that's why part of what we're saying as part of shifting the Haiti narrative, there are a, there's a robust plan in place to ensure that we address those issues more creatively. Mm -hmm. So rather than folks coming to do just charitable work in yeah, Haiti, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're hoping again, to bring the economy to a place, to a stand where Haiti can stand on its own two feet. Mm. Too much of the Haitian economy for a long time has been dependent on international assistance. 
And yeah. we're saying that's not the gift that we keep on Assistance giving to us. doesn't help. It doesn't help anything. Investment helps. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's why we're creating an environment. So now the, the, the doing business environment in Haiti, we're offering a lot of incentive is to the business true, community. Is it true, Ambassador, when sometimes it's aid, that's, that breeds corruption? But when it's investment, it's kind of going on the ground. Yeah. Is that correct or no? Let me say one thing. Post earthquake, something very interesting happened in Haiti. Okay. There was an outpour of support toward Haiti and its people. The intentions were good. But guess what? Most people, even the average American, thinking they already know what Haiti is suffering from. So people would come down with their own projects and think they would implement and solve our problem without any local input. Uh -huh. That has been one of the major disasters Haiti has faced. Oftentimes, there's a lot of uh, uh, aid money flowing into the country, but usually there's very little local input into how this is done. Those are the things we're trying to address right now, where we're saying we're taking ownership of our destiny. We want people to come and collaborate with us, rather than people coming and dictating us how we should be addressing some of those major development issues that we're facing. We certain we're going to get development right, but there are a series of challenges, most and foremost in terms of communicating with our friends and allies. How many Haitians are in the United States? Well. Like I said, there's a long history between Haiti and the United States. Uh, the Haitian community have been, has been living here since the day of the United States became an independent country. Ah, okay. So from that point of view, the, the, the length between the U.S. and Haiti is quite long. Now, those who are holding, by the way, Haitian, the Haitian Constitution allows somebody of Haitian descent to hold double nationality. Okay. So there are a number of folks of Haitian descent who hold a Haitian passport, but also have a U.S. passport. But in there the are position. hundreds of thousands, right? Millions. Millions? There's millions. Keep oh. in mind that uh, between second and third generation of Haitians, oh, yeah, you, sure. I mean, you go to places in, in, in Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. you go to places in, in Florida, you go to, to Boston and other parts of Massachusetts. Even here in the DMV area, there are thousands and thousands of Haitian and Haitian American living mm -hmm. here. And part, again, that's why the, the statement allegedly made by the U.S. president, it was hurtful from a different, also for, for multiple reasons. The, there were issues, supposedly something was said along the line, why do we need more Haitians here? As if those who've been here, they've been up to no good. And we have one of the most productive Haitian community, uh, immigrant community living here. Mm. You go to your on, uh, college campuses, you have university professors. Haitian Americans who are university presidents, uh, you know, uh, you, on, 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 on boards of uh, major institutions, you have Haitian there. You, you go to Boston, a lot of the cabbies are Haitians. In other words, up and down the social ladder, up and down the economic ladder of American life, you find Haitians being productive along the way. So this is our way of saying, as a community of people here living in the United States, the Haitian community has been exemplary. By 2019, which is next year, sure. 50 or 60,000 Haitians are supposed to, who are in some kind CPS, of... CPS, Temporary uh, Protected Status. Temporary Protected Status, are supposed to leave the United States. Where will they go? What will they do? What, what, tell me. Well, two issues there. Uh, the Temporary Protected Status was, uh, uh, Haiti benefited from that as a result of the earthquake. Yep. Me personally, I've been engaged in a series of conversations with the U.S. administration on extending TPS. Ah, good. Why extension was important, many other issues... Are you making some progress there? We've made some progress, but uh, to our uh, surprise, uh, uh, the administration has decided to uh, terminate TPS just uh, about every country, including Haiti. So in July 2019, the program as we know it would actually... Uh, will end, not just for Haitian, but for a number of other countries, but not on the merit of what's actually taking place on the ground in terms of condition. What we've been asking the administration, come and understand what's happening on the ground. We have just uh, under a minute left. Sure. Tell us in 30 seconds, what is your primary mission here as ambassador from the Republic of Haiti? Well, a few things. One, we're addressing this immigration debate uh, because there are so many Haitians 
who are, will be affected by that. And number two? Two, there's this major Haiti narrative. Too much of Haiti, when it's being discussed in the public domain, it revolves around negative issues. There are too many good things happening with the people of Haiti and the country of Haiti. We undiscuss it to ensure that people know about the history. Third. Third, now we're inviting the American public. And I'm using your platform here to ensure that what we're doing is not just government to government. It's with the people of the United States. Come and take a leisure trip to Haiti. Come discover that side of the country that you're not accustomed to seeing. You'll be surprised this little secret known as Haiti, how good it is in terms of you bring friends and family and colleagues to work and actually enjoy your time with. Mr. Ambassador. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much thank for the for education. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by The Libra Group, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, the Rotondaro Family Trust, Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.